The next step, the step from being creatures to being sons, is voluntary. When it is offered to us, we can refuse it. The more we take what we now call ourselves out of the way and let him take over, the more truly ourselves we become. He invented all the different men that you and I were intended to be. But there must be a real giving up of the self. As long as your own personality is what you are concerned with, you are not going to him at all. The first step is to try to forget about the self altogether. Give up yourself and you will find your real self. Lose your life and you will save it. Look for yourself and in the long run you will find only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him, and with him, everything else thrown in. Excerpts from the book, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis Hello, we are soulful devotions. If you've made it here, believe me, it's not by chance. God has a special purpose for your life, and we are certain that he guided you to us to receive a message of transformation. If our content touches your heart, we kindly ask you to like, subscribe to our channel, and share it with those you love. Together, we can spread God's word and love even further. Now, without further delay, let's dive into the word of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I understand that the journey can sometimes feel overwhelming as if you're fighting a daily battle, pushing and pulling, just to keep going. The challenges keep coming, piling up. You wake up hoping that the new day will bring change, hoping that things will finally start to improve. Yet somehow, it feels like you're stuck in the same place. The struggles, the persistent pain, and those unanswered prayers, all of it can make you want to give up. I understand we've all been there, but today I want to bring you a message of hope. God is preparing something special for you, something closer than you imagine. In the midst of adversity, it's easy to believe that the darkness will never end. It's natural to ask, how long, Lord? How much longer must I endure this? Feeling exhausted, discouraged, and even questioning whether God is listening is part of the process, but I'm here to remind you, God is not only listening, he is working. Behind the scenes, he is orchestrating blessings that your eyes cannot yet see. And soon, very soon, he will surprise you. Understand this, God has not forgotten you in the midst of your battles. He sees your tears and feels your pain. In fact, in Isaiah 43, 2 we read, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. This means that even in the hardest moments, God is by your side, walking through the storm with you. He has not abandoned you, and he never will. He is preparing something extraordinary that will come when you least expect it. Allow me to share a truth with you. The difficulties we face often come right before great victories. That's why sometimes the struggle feels so intense, as if everything is falling apart. This happens because you are so close to your blessing, and the enemy will do everything to make you give up. He wants you to lose hope, to believe that God has forgotten you. But listen closely. Don't give up. Your breakthrough is closer than you think. Psalm 30. 5 reminds us, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. This means that your suffering, your difficulties, your sleepless nights are temporary. On the other side is joy, a joy that only God can give, a joy that will surprise you in ways you can't even imagine. Know that God's timing is perfect, while we often wish he would act immediately, he always knows the right moment to move. We often want God to fix everything right away. 
We want him to intervene and change our situation the moment we ask. But God knows the exact timing. He knows the best time to act, and believe me, when he does, it will be far beyond anything you could have imagined. He will surprise you in such an incredible way that you'll be left speechless. And looking back, you'll see that this difficult season was actually preparing you for something far greater. Now, brothers and sisters, let's talk about something essential in times of trial, endurance. In the beginning, when the storm hits, we find the strength to say, I, I can handle this, I will overcome. But as days turn into weeks and weeks into months, that strength starts to fade. That flame that once burned inside us starts to flicker and we wonder if we have what it takes to keep going. Listen closely to what I'm about to tell you. Endurance is where true power lies. The more you persevere, the closer you are to your great victory. The enemy wants to break your spirit before you can see what God is about to do in your life. He knows that if he can make you give up, you will miss out on the blessing that's just around the corner. But endurance doesn't mean you won't feel tired. It doesn't mean you won't have moments of doubt, moments when you cry out, Why, Lord, why is this happening to me? Endurance means continuing to trust God, even when you don't understand. It means believing that His plan is far greater than the pain you're feeling right now. Always remember, God's timing is not ours. Sometimes we think, I've endured so much, I don't see anything changing. But what we don't realize is that the finish line may be closer than we imagine. It's like running a marathon, when you're the most exhausted, when your legs are about to give out. That's often when the finish line is just ahead. But if you give up, you'll never see it. God has a purpose in your endurance, and this journey is leading you to something greater. Every tear you've shed, every silent prayer in the dark, and every time you've held on to your faith, even when you wanted to give up, God has seen it all. He is preparing something grand for you, a blessing beyond what you could imagine, a reward for all your perseverance. The more you endure, the greater the gift he has in store. Galatians 6, 9 teaches us, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Did you catch that? If we do not give up, that's the key. Your blessing, your great breakthrough, is directly tied to your ability to endure just a little longer. The harvest is coming, and your season of reaping is on the way. You've been planting seeds of faith, hope, and perseverance, and soon you will see the fruits of that labor. God is not ignoring your cries. He's just preparing the ground for your harvest. Think about the surprises he's about to reveal in your life. Imagine the doors. He's about to open doors you didn't even know existed. Imagine the divine favor that's about to pour into your life, blessings that will overflow. All of this is waiting for you. It's on the way. The only thing you need to do is not give up. I know, my dear friends, that enduring can be tough. I know how hard it is to keep faith when it feels like nothing is changing. But pay close attention. God is about to surprise you in an incredible way. The weight of your struggles will not be wasted. Every tear, every sleepless night, every whispered prayer. It's all building something great. So endure. Stay firm. God is faithful and he will honor your perseverance. And when that happens, it will be more than you could ever imagine. Remember, God never leaves us without signs. He is always guiding us and is right beside us, preparing the way. God often gives us signs that we are approaching the blessing he has prepared for us, even when we can't see the full picture. 
When you're going through a difficult season, it's natural to struggle to see anything positive. It feels like everything around you is falling apart. But let me remind you of something crucial. The hardest battles often come just before the greatest victories. The pressure you're feeling, the weight of the struggle. It's all a sign that God is about to move powerfully in your life. So how do you know that God is about to surprise you? One of the first signs is feeling more opposition than ever. It might seem strange, but when things start to get worse, that's actually a good sign. It means the enemy is trying with all his might to block what God is about to release in your life. The struggles seem to multiply. Challenges come from every direction, and everything seems to be going wrong all at once. But take heart. This is a clear sign that the enemy is threatened by what God is about to do. He knows that you're on the brink of your breakthrough. That's why he tries to distract you with doubt and fear. But don't fall for it. Hold on to your faith even tighter, because your blessing is closer than you think. Another sign that God is about to act is when you start losing things you thought were essential. Sometimes, before God blesses us with something new, He removes what no longer serves us. Maybe you've lost a job, a relationship, or, or something else you thought was crucial to your happiness. I know it's painful and can feel unfair, but that loss could be a sign that God is clearing the way for something greater. He's removing what was holding you back so that He can lead you into a new season of abundance. Trust that even when it feels like you're losing, God is actually setting the stage for a much bigger victory. He's opening doors you can't yet see, and the blessings that are coming will be greater than you ever imagined. Another powerful sign is when you begin to feel an unusual sense of peace in the midst of the storm. This peace doesn't come from your circumstances, but directly from God. It's that moment when, despite everything falling apart around you, an inexplicable calm fills your heart. This is God's peace, a reminder that He is in control and that your breakthrough is on the way. You may not see the answer yet, but this peace is the clearest sign that God is working on something extraordinary for you. Dear brothers and sisters, when you start noticing these signs, the opposition intensifying, unexpected changes happening, and God's peace filling your heart, know that God's surprise is near. Your great breakthrough is about to be revealed. You may not know exactly when or how, but you can trust one thing completely. God is faithful. He is never slow in keeping His promises, and He is about to reward your perseverance with a blessing that will leave you in awe. Now, I want to speak to those who are facing doubts. It's completely normal, isn't it? When difficulties persist and prayers seem to go unanswered, doubt starts to whisper in our ears. You begin to wonder, will God really act on my behalf? Will I really see this great breakthrough? Or am I holding on to faith for nothing? Today I want to tell you something important. Your faith is your most powerful weapon in this season. Even when everything around you seems to be falling apart, even when doubt tries to creep in, hold your faith firm. You see, the enemy wants you to give up. He knows that if he can plant doubt in your heart, it will distance you from God's promises. And once you stop believing, you stop fighting, stop praying, and stop expecting your breakthrough. That's exactly what the enemy wants, but you can't let him win. Stay firm in your faith, even when things don't make sense. Having faith doesn't mean you'll never have doubts or moments of weakness. Faith, in reality, is the decision to keep trusting, even when questions arise and circumstances seem challenging. It is this faith that will carry you through to the other side of the storm, where your blessing awaits. Faith means that, despite doubt, 
despite the questions you choose to believe that God is still working. You choose to believe that his promises will be fulfilled, even when the situation seems impossible. There will be times when your faith is the only thing keeping you going. You may not see a way out, but your faith says that God will make a way. You may not understand why things are happening, but your faith whispers that God is in control. Having faith is trusting in God, even when the outcome is not visible. It's believing that his plan is good, even when everything around you seems to be falling apart. Think about it. If your breakthrough had already arrived, you wouldn't need faith. Faith is what you hold on to when the answers haven't yet come, when the miracle hasn't yet arrived. Even when the situation remains unchanged, faith is believing that God is moving, even in the silence. Now I want to encourage you to strengthen that faith. I know it can be hard when you're tired, when you've been waiting for so long, but faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. And right now, in the middle of your difficulties, is the perfect time to build your faith. How do you do that? Start by remembering who God is. He is a God who keeps his promises. He never fails, and he loves you so much that he is working for your good, even when it doesn't seem like it. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past will strengthen your faith for the future. If he brought you this far, he will certainly do it again. Another way to build your faith is to speak life into your situation. Often, doubt becomes overwhelming because we focus on the negative. We keep telling ourselves that nothing will change or that we don't know if we can keep going. But my friends, your words have power. Start speaking life instead of doubt. Declare, my breakthrough is coming or God is working on my behalf. Even if you can't see it yet, keep declaring it. Because your words can transform your perspective. Believe me, your faith is shaping the path to the blessing God is about to pour into your life. Speak this aloud. As you begin to speak life into your situation, your faith will grow. Now, I know that some of you feel like your faith is hanging by a thread. You're tired. You've been fighting praying and believing, but now you're starting to wonder if it's still worth it to hold on. Let me tell you something. It's always worth holding on to your faith. Don't let the enemy convince you otherwise. Your breakthrough is on the way, and it is your faith that will carry you to that moment. Remember what is written in Hebrews 11. 1. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Your faith is that confidence. It is the proof that even though you don't see it yet, your breakthrough is coming. It's the assurance that God is still working, even when you don't perceive it, even when he is working behind the scenes. So, my friends, I encourage you today, hold on to your faith. Don't let doubt steal your hope. Don't let the enemy extinguish your belief that God is still able to do the impossible. Even in the midst of difficulties, even in the middle of the storm, hold on to your faith with all your strength. God is going to surprise you soon, and when that breakthrough finally comes, you will look back and realize that it was your faith that sustained you. Brothers and sisters, the path to your breakthrough isn't always easy. It's filled with challenges, setbacks, and moments when you feel like you can't go on. But listen carefully. God is using this season to build something precious in you, endurance. Endurance is the ability to keep moving forward, even when the journey feels unbearable. It is the strength to keep believing even when nothing seems to change. This endurance is what will lead you to victory. God doesn't just want to bless you with the breakthrough. He wants to ensure that you are strong enough to keep it when it arrives. 
The truth is, is that the blessing you're waiting for isn't something temporary. It's something that will shape your life for years to come. And to sustain that blessing, you need to be equipped with endurance. Endurance is like a muscle. It only grows when it's tested. It only gets stronger when it's pushed beyond what's comfortable. God is preparing you, strengthening you, so that when the blessing comes, you'll be ready to receive and hold on to it. So stay strong. Your breakthrough is coming, and you will be stronger than ever when it arrives. Right now, in the midst of your difficulties, God is strengthening that endurance muscle within you. He's building that inner strength because he knows that what's coming next will require a capacity that you're developing at this very moment. I know it can be tempting to want to give up when the battle feels overwhelming. I understand that. There are moments when you feel like you've prayed every prayer. You could pray, believed all you could believe, and still nothing has changed. But today I want to encourage you. You are stronger than you think. God has placed a strength within you that you may not have recognized yet, and it's that strength that will carry you to your breakthrough. James 1.12 reminds us, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This means that there is a reward for your endurance. There is a blessing waiting for those who don't give up, and that blessing is on the other side of this trial. So what does endurance look like in our daily lives? Endurance is getting up every day and choosing to trust God, even when it's hard. It's continuing to pray, continuing to believe, continuing to wait, even when the answers haven't yet come. Endurance is holding onto God's promises when everything inside of you wants to give up. You might be thinking, but I'm so tired. I don't know if I can keep going. And that's okay. God understands your exhaustion. He sees the weight you've been carrying. He knows how long you've been waiting. But here's the good news. God doesn't expect you to endure with your own strength. He is the one who gives you the strength to keep going. So trust in him. When your strength fails, it's God's power that will sustain you. He will be by your side, giving you the courage to move forward, and in his perfect timing, you will see the fruit of your perseverance. He is the one who lifts you up when the weight of exhaustion feels unbearable, when it seems like you can't take another step. As you lean on him, he gives you the endurance you need to overcome. As it is written in Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. What a wonderful promise. If you place your hope in God, he will renew your strength. He will give you the endurance to keep running this race, to keep moving forward, and to make it to the other side in victory. Now I want you to understand something important. Endurance doesn't mean the absence of struggle. On the contrary, endurance is built in the middle of struggle. It's not about having an easy life, but about having the strength to face the hard moments. Endurance is what allows you to keep going, even when life feels like it's pulling you backward. And here's the most powerful part. Endurance doesn't just help you get through the tough times. It transforms you. It makes you stronger. It deepens your faith. It teaches you to rely on God in ways you never have before. When you come out of this season, you won't be the same person you were when you entered it. You will be stronger, wiser, and more equipped to handle the blessings that God is about to pour into your life. So today I want to encourage you, don't give up. I know the road has been hard. I know the waiting has been painful. But God is building endurance in you. 
and that endurance is what will carry you to your great breakthrough. Every step you take, every moment you choose to keep going, you are getting closer to your victory. You are getting stronger with every moment, even if you don't feel it yet. The enemy wants to wear you down. He wants to convince you that it's not worth it, that you're too tired to keep going, that you'll never see the breakthrough. But don't believe those lies. You have God's strength inside of you. You have the power to endure. Hold on, because your victory is closer than you think. With God by your side, you will overcome this season. Let me share something important with you, my friends. The difficulties you face won't last forever, just as the seasons change in nature. This phase will also pass. Your struggles will end and the long-awaited breakthrough will come. But while you are going through this time of trial, know that God is working. He is cultivating your endurance, strengthening your faith, and preparing you for the wonderful blessings he has in store. So keep going, keep believing, and don't lose sight of what God is doing. He's not finished with you yet. The divine surprise he has prepared for you is closer than you think. And when it comes, you'll understand why every moment of waiting, every tear shed, and every battle fought was worth it. Hold on to that promise, my friends. Your endurance will be the key to your victory. I'd like to invite each of you to join our time of prayer with soulful devotions. We always love to lift our prayers out loud to our Lord God and Saviour Jesus Christ. Pray with us. Heavenly Father, we come before you with heavy hearts, but with surrendered souls and hands lifted in full trust. We know that even when we feel overwhelmed, you are our refuge. We acknowledge your sovereign power and immeasurable grace, believing that you see every tear, every struggle, and every cry that arises from our hearts. Lord, you are always working for us, even in the shadows, and today we cry out for your strength. Give us courage to face the difficult days when the path feels dark and the burdens are so heavy that we feel we can't continue. Strengthen our faith, Lord, so that it doesn't waver and help us to trust in your promises, even when everything around us makes us doubt. For those suffering financial difficulties, Father, we ask for divine intervention. Open doors that our eyes cannot see, remove invisible obstacles, and provide for every one of our needs. May your provision pour down like a rain of blessings upon our lives, giving us peace where there is worry and hope, where there is despair. For those crying out for healing, Lord, stretch out your merciful hand. Let your powerful touch restore not only bodies, but also broken minds and hearts. We know that you are the God who makes all things new, and we trust that your healing will not fail. Bring life where there was illness, bring light where there was darkness, and renew every cell, every emotion, every soul that needs your restoration. For those seeking restoration in their lives, we ask, Father, that you renew what has been lost. Restore broken relationships, resurrect dormant dreams, and bring back hopes that seem to have disappeared. Where there are ruins, plant gardens. Where there is pain, pour out your comfort. Let your love invade the darkest areas and bring new life, bright and full of promise. Lord, we believe that your favor is on the way and that your goodness will surprise us beyond what we can imagine. Help us keep the flame of hope alive, even on the darkest days. May our eyes remain fixed on you, knowing that, in your perfect timing, everything will be transformed. Thank you, Lord, for your unwavering love, for your faithfulness that never fails. Let our hearts remain confident that the best is yet to come. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray with gratitude, faith, and expectation. Amen. 
If this message has touched your heart and brought blessings into your life today, we encourage you to share it with those who need to hear this message of hope and love. By doing so, you help us fulfill the instructions written in Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Dear brothers and sisters, as we spread the word of the Lord, we are fulfilling his divine will and bringing light to lives that need comfort and guidance. Let us be instruments of God's love, sharing this message and allowing others to experience the peace and joy that come from knowing our Saviour. Together, with hearts full of love and gratitude, let us bring the good news to every corner of the world following the Lord's call. Don't forget to click the like button. Also subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Now, for those listening who wish to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour, I encourage you to open your heart and receive God's grace. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Jesus came to save the lost and God loves you deeply. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Say this simple prayer of salvation in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I repent of my sins and invite you into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Thank you so much to everyone who watched our video and prayed with us in these prayers. We are always happy to be part of the daily lives of many of you. May God continue to bless the lives of each of you and your families. Until the next video.